All right, continuing on with some personal finance, we are going to talk about credit today, how to build credit, what credit is, credit cards, that sort of thing. Important stuff for us to know, so let's get going. So first, what is credit? Credit is the ability to borrow money or access good or services with the understanding that you will pay it later. So lenders, merchants, and service providers, known collectively as creditors, Grant credit based on their confidence you can be trusted to pay back what you borrowed along with any finance charges that may apply. To the extent that creditors consider you worthy of their trust, you are said to be credit worthy or to have good credit. So credit is money, right, basically, uh, or virtual money to buy things that you don't have the money for right now, right? So examples, credit cards, right? Um, Credit limit, say my credit limit is $10,000, right? I don't have that $10,000, but they extend to me $10,000 worth of credit to buy things with, with the understanding that I'll pay them back later, plus interest, plus whatever. Same thing with a mortgage, right, for a home. Very few of us ever in this country will have, say, or in the world will have, say, $300,000 in cash to buy a house with, right? So you get a $300,000 mortgage. That's credit. You pay it back, right? So that's what credit is. So how it basically works. In the centuries past, creditors might have gauged your credit worthiness by reputation alone. Obviously, this method was subjective and prone to error, ma manipulation, and bias. These days, creditors prefer a more objective approach. So in the United States, typically they look to your credit history, your record of borrowing and repaying funds as a step, as the first step in determining whether to issue you credit. So that credit history is summarized in files known as credit reports compiled by all three independent credit bureaus. So here in America, we have three credit reporting institutions. That is Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. Banks, credit unions, credit card issuers, and other creditors will voluntarily report your borrowing and repayment information to the credit bureaus. So say I got a credit card and my credit card uh, had a $500 limit. That's what it was when I was... 17, I got my first credit card um, from Discover Card. So I spend $400 that month, I pay off my $400. Every month, Discover Card sends a report to Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax saying, Mr. Chandler paid his uh, credit off this month, and so it gets reported, and that increases my payment. Same thing if uh, you buy a house, right? We talked about mortgages a second ago. If you pay your mortgage each month, every month, the bank that you pay your mortgage to reports to uh, the government and to the Experian and TransUnion Equifax that you paid your uh, whatever your payment was for that month. You're paying it, you're keeping up with it, so your credit score goes up. That's how it gets reported. Other places, right? Like every place that could extend you credit, um, back in, in Salt Lake, there's a big uh, furniture place called RC Willie, right? So say I wanted to buy a couch, but I didn't have the $700 the couch cost. Maybe I could buy it on credit and you finance it through RC Willie. They report every month whether or not you paid them. Right? So it could be good, it could be bad. If I missed it that month, then they'd call and tell these people I missed a payment, and that would hurt my credit score. That would go in the credit report that you have missed payments. So the information in your credit report includes the number of credit card accounts you have, their borrowing limits, and current outstanding balances. So I have two credit cards, so it would list my two credit cards. It would say how much uh, my credit limit is on, on those, which means how much I could actually use. So say it's $14,000 or something. That's my limit. It would report that, and it would tell... Um, how much money I still owe if I haven't paid it off already. It also shows the amounts of any loans you've taken out, how much you've, of them you've paid back. So say my car loan, I haven't paid off my car yet, so it would show the loan for my car and how much I've paid towards that loan. Uh, also on your credit report, it says whether your monthly payments for your accounts were made on time, late, or missed altogether. And more severe financial setbacks, such as mortgage foreclosures, car repossessions, and bankruptcies. Uh, we're going to try to hope that you don't have to go through any of those things. To help narrow their lending decisions, creditors often use a three-digit no number known as a credit score as the first step in deciding whether or not to issue credit. Your credit score distills the information on your credit report to something that's easy to interpret and does so in a fair way that minimizes the possibility of bias, or at least as much as they can maybe at this point. Sophisticated systems known as credit scoring models calculate your credit score by performing complex, complex statistical analysis on the contents of your credit file. Different models such as the FICO score and the Vantage score calculate scores differently but also 
uh, but I'll assign higher scores to individuals whose credit histories make them statistically more credit worthy than those with lower scores. You'll see FICO a lot. A lot of the credit card companies uh, will give you your FICO credit score, um, Discover card, which I have a Discover card, will give you my FICO score every month. I also have a Chase card, and that gives it through a different scoring system. I think it's just the Equifax. But um, So your credit score is a three-digit number, right? And you want it to be as high as possible. Um, I'm going to give you the ranges here in a second. Uh, but what you pay, if you're doing it on time, how much you owe compared to how much money you actually have, and some other things go into that three-digit score. So we'll go through all that stuff, though, in detail. So your credit score. When you apply for credit, lenders determine your credit risk by examining your credit scores, also known as FICO scores. Each of the three main credit bureaus, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, keep credit information about you that is used to calculate your FICO scores. This includes your payment history, the amount of money you owe, the length of your credit history, and the number of recently opened credit cards. So in basics, okay, the general range for your credit score is between 300 and 850. You want to be above 700. You want to be above 800. You want to be as close to 850 as you can, right? So if you're above 700, you're considered to have good to excellent credit, right? So if it gets up in the seven, above, I think 775 and up, I think they consider excellent. Um, so that demonstrates that you are low risk. You're not going to um, uh, bounce on the loan or whatever you might take out and that you have good financial health in general. Below 600 means that you are higher risk to lenders, which means that you'll get a higher interest rate. You could get turned down uh, for fear that you will not be able to pay back the loan or the credit you are asking for. A good credit score can help you do a lot of things, right? Lower your interest rates, okay? When you get a house, uh, a mortgage, um, your credit score goes a long way to getting a lower interest rate on that mortgage. Same with cars, uh, same with basically everything else. It'll speed up your credit approvals. So say you need to get another credit card or you need to get a new car or whatever, right? If you have a higher credit score, you generally get approved faster. It'll reduce deposit requirements uh, by utilities. So when you're filing for uh, or when you're getting uh, your utility set up for your house or businesses or stuff like that, sometimes they'll require deposits. But the better your credit is, the less deposit they require on things like that. Easier to get approved for an apartment. Every time uh, that you apply to live in an apartment, they will run your credit score. They do that because you're renting the apartment from them, right? And they want to make sure you can pay back or pay your rent. It also helps you obtain better credit cards, car loans, mortgage offers. I kind of talked about that already. So what goes into your credit score? These percentages are approximations. They are not exact, but it kind of goes along these lines. So big part of it is your payment history. So late payments, bankruptcies, and other negative items can hurt your credit score, but a solid record of on-time payments helps your score. So say you take out a car loan, right? Um, Part of the way I built my credit when I was a kid is uh, we would take out, I, when, I, when we had enough money to get me a car when I was like 18, we took out a car loan and I co-signed on it with my, with my parents or with my dad. Uh, so it affected my score to keep the payments up and then I just set an automatic withdrawal from my bank account so I never had any late payments and my credit score went up because of that. Part of your uh, credit score also is how much you owe. They look at how much you owe on all of your accounts. So if you owe a lot on your credit cards, if you have like a $10,000 balance that you haven't paid off yet, that's going to hurt your score, right? When you first get, say, like a car or a house or whatever, you obviously owe a ton uh, on that. So that affects it a bit as well, but not as much as outstanding, say, credit card balances. All right, the length of your credit history, right? So all of, none of you have a credit history or you will have a very short one if you have uh, done a car loan type thing like I just talked about with my parents or if you got a credit card at this point at your age. Um, but the longer you use credit, right, the older you get, as long as you stay responsible paying off your stuff, your credit score goes up with your age. Okay. Uh, new credit, if you've recently applied for or opened new credit accounts, your credit score will weigh this fact against the rest of your credit history. So one thing to think about, long-term future for you, but when you uh, say want to get a house, Right, uh, you'll maybe go through a pre-approval process, and they will run your credit. And when a when a realtor or a mortgage broken co brokerage company company runs your credit, it will lower your credit score temporarily. You open up a bunch of new credit cards. Obviously, that will lower your credit score as well. And then other factors, minor factors include that can influence your score uh, include things like a mix of credit types on your credit report, credit cards and installment loans or whatever are normal for people with longer credit histories. And can add slightly to their scores, but if you have a less of a credit history, it could hurt your score. So uh, for the most of you, you don't have a credit history at all right now. You have no credit, and we'll talk about how to build credit here in a moment. 
One thing I'll also mention later, but just to say it now too, so I don't forget, debit cards and credit cards are not at all similar, are not at all the same thing. Debit cards just withdraw from your checking account, whereas credit cards are based on this credit that we're talking about right now. It's money you do not have. All right, so how to boost your score, right? Pay your bills on time. This is a big one. Late payments and defaults really, really hurt your credit score. And the second one is really big too. Keep your balances low on credit cards. High debt levels hurt your score, plus credit cards uh, charge you an insane amount of interest, okay? Sometimes upward of 30%. Uh, that's a lot to pay, right? Uh, and we'll look at a chart here in a minute that kind of explains how some, some things end up costing way more than it shows because of that interest, right? But as long as you pay off, I mean, so the best advice is to pay off your credit card every month, right? I buy almost everything on my credit card, and I pay it off every month, and I've got a really good credit score. Right? And you can start doing that when you're younger by setting a very, a very sharp credit limit. Right? They offered me when I was younger to increase my credit limit on my Discover card above $500, but I wouldn't do it because I knew even if I spent to the limit, I made more than $500 a month and I could pay it off. Right? Where people get into trouble is when they raise their credit limit and then they spend more than they make and they can't pay off their stuff. At the very least, you want to make minimum payments, but you got to make sure that none of your payments are late. And ideally, you pay off those uh, credit card balances every month. All right, other ways to boost your score. Apply for and open new credit accounts only when you need them. Okay, the most important way to improve your credit score in this area is to pay down your evolving credit like credit cards. Do not get a new store card every place you go to, right? All the clothing stores, American Eagle, Express, um, all those places will say, hey, how would you like an Express credit card? We'll give you all these, we'll give you 50% off of your first uh, purchase and all that sort of stuff right that you don't need you don't need a card for every place you go right Cabela's does it uh, Lowe's does it I know Home Depot does it you don't need a credit card for each individual store right that's a problem that people get into all right, another thing you need to do is check your credit report regularly for accuracy and contact the creditor and credit reporting agency to correct any errors that part gets a little bit annoying uh, by law, each credit um, reporting group, Equifax and TransUnion and Experian, have to send you your credit report every year for free if you request it. So first thing you got to do is you got to request it. Second thing, uh, uh, then review it. Hopefully there's no issues. I've never had issues on mine. Thank goodness, knocking on wood here. But um, if there's an issue, then you have to deal with the credit reporting agency, and that can be annoying. If you have missed payments, get current and stay current. Okay, most places will give you a little bit of forgiveness for missing a payment if you've got uh, if you've been good in the past, but you need to fix it. Even if you messed up in the past, right, and missed a couple of payments, you got to pay that down and continue paying it on time for the rest of time to get your credit score back up. So some specific actions that'll boost your credit score: if you pay off all your accounts, your credit score will go by 80 points or so. Building a history of paying on time it will boost your score by about 40 points. Pay down your credit card balance another 40 points. Pay down further and no new accounts, another 50. Pay all overdue payments and keep your loans current, 20. And six months of on-time payments will raise your score by about 30 points. Some other ways uh, to keep your credit score strong, complete credit applications carefully and accurately. Use your credit cards responsibly. Don't reach their limit or spend beyond your means. That's a big one, right? Make sure that whatever you know you're going to owe on your credit card is less than what you make that month. you got to be able to pay off your credit card. Choose your credit cards wisely. Make sure you understand all the terms and features. That's a big one. I know that reading piece is very annoying to read through the fine print on your credit cards. But one of the, I mean, there's not a whole lot of things that can affect um, your future more than your credit, right? Uh, everybody wants to buy a house. Everybody wants uh, to have a car. Everybody wants to be able to get the things that they want in their life, right? And your credit affects that. Every purchase you make is affected by your credit score. So... You need to read those annoying fine print stuff on credit cards, right? This is one of the few things you really, really need to do that for. Uh, you need to attempt to pay your credit card balance in full each month, but at least make the minimum payments. Uh, that, that's your last, last choice, right? Your last option is to make a minimum payment. You will always want to pay more than the minimum, and if you can, pay it off every month. Always pay your bills on time. That's real easy nowadays, right? Um, Automatic bill pay, you can get it, uh, deductions immediately out of your checking account to pay your bills on time every month. That's what I do, and you don't have to think about it after that. If you have problems paying your bills, you can contact your creditors. In many cases, they'll work with you to figure out a, a payment plan. There's a whole lot of refinancing organizations like SoFi that will bundle all of your credits um, or your outstanding credits, I should say, and help you pay them down. If you move, let your creditors know what your new address is as soon as possible to avoid losing bills or receiving them late. 
If your credit card is lost or stolen, you need to report it immediately. Credit card companies are pretty good about fixing fraudulent payments. Debit cards, uh, banks, not quite as much, uh, which is why uh, another reason why I generally use my credit card more often. Check your credit reports periodically, so at least every year, for inaccuracies and immediately report them, and establish a consistent work history. So, to get a glimpse into your financial future, many businesses look at your past. So now we're on your credit report. Your financial history is contained in your credit report, which can determine everything from whether you qualify for a loan and the rate you'll pay on that loan to your prospects for renting an apartment or obtaining a car or car insurance. A strong credit report is key to building and managing your finances. So, credit report is a profile of your financial history. It shows lenders, landlords, employers, how you have managed money in the past and helps them decide whether or not to do business with you in the future. Credit reports contain a consumer credit history, including things like debts, bankruptcies, unpaid bills, and credit card usage. Who can see it? Your credit report can and most likely be reviewed by anyone planning to give you a loan or credit, such as lenders, banks, credit unions, credit card companies, auto financing companies, and insurance companies. It might also be checked by landlords and potential employers. Um, one thing that's happened a lot recently is that employers will have to run a credit check on you, um, I guess, to see if you're fiscally responsible. Landlords obviously always do it because they want to make sure that you um, can pay your rent uh, every month. Anyone with a legitimate business can, uh, a business need can access your credit report through an employer or a prospective employer. Uh, typically requires your written consent to do so. So when you apply and they say, oh, hey, we like you and we're gonna, we think we're going to keep you, but we need to check your credit score and your background, will you sign this paper to approve that? And then you sign it and they check it. So understanding your credit report. Your credit report is a record of your credit history over time. There are three major credit reporting agencies or credit bureaus. We talked about them before. Each of them, create, uh, each of them provides their own credit report, right? Uh, they, you can't get that bundled together, but it's easiest just to have them send it to you each individually. Uh, those numbers will vary, but they shouldn't vary a ton, right? I shouldn't get a 750 from Experian and a 760 from Equifax and a 200 from TransUnion. Then you'd realize that there is a huge problem. Personal information will be on there, okay? Uh, this will include your vitals, such as your name and any aliases or common misspellings that have been reported by a creditor. Social security number and any variations that may have been reported. Birth date, current and previous addresses, and current and previous employers. It does not include information about your marital status, your bank account balances, income, education level, race, religious preferences, medical history, personal lifestyle, political preferences, friends, criminal records, or anything unrelated to credit. Trade account information. Here you'll find a list of your open credit accounts, including the creditor's name, your account number, the amount you owe, your available credit limit or original loan amount, and whether you've paid on time and are current on payments. You'll also find data on closed accounts, including the payment history on those accounts and whether or not they were closed in good standing. What that means is that, so say you wanted to pay off a credit card and get rid of it, right? Say I want to get rid of my Discover card. So I pay it off and I owe nothing and then I close it. I closed it in good standing. If you tried to close it or do something when you had late payments or all sorts of issues like that, then they would not be considered good standing. Negative information on credit reports can include missed or late payments and charge-offs. Learn more about this uh, later, uh, here in a second, um, and there's more information. If you click on the highlighted words in here, it's got all these links to uh, other websites and stuff like that to help you get more information. So, public record information credit reports also contain information from the courts, including bankruptcy filing. Public records can negatively impact your credit, right? So, when you, uh, when you, you know, declare bankruptcy, which hopefully none of us have to go through, but if you do, it's not just a credit or economic-based thing, it is a legal document, it's a legal thing, that you go, a legal process, I should say, that you go through, right? And that becomes a public record. Credit inquiries, I talked about this a little bit before. Your record will show hard inquiries based on actions you have taken, such as applying for credit or financing as the, or as the result of a collection. Soft inquiries, on the other hand, are a result of action taken by others like companies making promotional offers of credit or your lender conducting periodic reviews of your existing credit accounts. Soft inquiries also occur when you check your own credit report or when you use credit monitoring services from companies like Experian. These inquiries do not impact your, impact your credit score. Hard ones will temporarily do that. So if you're applying for a mortgage, right? If you're, like I said, if you're trying to get pre-approved, they will do a hard inquiry into your credit. If you're looking for ways to improve your credit, taking care of negative information can help. Contact the reporting agencies if you find any inaccurate information on your credit report. 
pay down your high balances and bring all accounts current if you've fallen behind. One thing to note, one thing to note uh, beware of fast fixes for accurate credit problems. If you had any late payments, foreclosures, or repossessions, this information stays on your credit report for up to seven years. If you file for bankruptcy, that stays on there for 10 years. Some companies claim they can fix these problems for a fee. However, it is legally impossible to alter an accurate credit history. If you find yourself in financial trouble, consider contacting a, mem a member agency of the National Foundation for Credit Counseling or go to their website. Uh, you'll get a whole bunch of things that say if you pay this, we'll boost your score or this and that. you got to be, be aware of that. Easiest way to avoid any of this stuff is to keep your credit balance um, current from this moment on. Right? Don't get that far behind. So there are four types of credit. Revolving credit. With revolving credit, you're giving a maximum borrowing limit, and you can make charges up to that limit. You must make a minimum payment each month, but otherwise the amount you pay can be any portion of your outstanding charges up to the full amount. If you make a partial payment, you will carry forward the remainder of your balance or revolve the debt. This is like credit cards, right? Most credit cards count as revolving debt, but not only does your, your debt continue on to the next month, but then they charge you interest on that debt. Charge cards, once common, commonly issued by retailers for use exclusively in their establishment, charge cards are relatively rare. Charge cards are used in much the same way as credit cards, but they don't permit you to carry a balance. You must pay all charges in full every month. So back in the day, if, say, you went to you know, um, JCPenney or whatever at the mall, you could get a JCPenney charge card, and you could only use that JCPenney, and you had to pay it off every month. Nowadays, um, all store cards are just basic credit cards because they want you to go spend, that, spend more of that credit because they charge you more in interest. Service credit. Your contracts with service providers such as gas and electric companies, cable and internet providers, cell cellular phone companies, and gyms are all considered credit agreements. These companies provide their services to you each month with the understanding that you will pay for them after the fact. Modern credit scoring systems, including the most recent versions of uh, FICO and Vantage score, can factor your service payment history into your credit scores. But those payments are not always rep reported to the credit bureaus. Um, Experian Boost has a thing you can do, I guess. I got a lot of information from Experian, so that sounds like a bit of an ad there as well. Installment credit. Installment credit is a loan for a specific sum of money that you agree to repay plus interest and fees in, in a series of equal monthly payments over a set period of time. So any loan, basically, right? Student loans, which you shouldn't take out. Car loans, which every, all of us will probably have to do. And mortgages, which we all will do, are examples of installment credit, right? So take out a $300,000 mortgage, I pay a little bit each month until I have it paid off. Why do you need credit? So uh, good credit is necessary if you plan to borrow money for major purchases, such as a car or a home. Or maybe you want to take advantage of the convenience and purchase uh, protection a, uh, and the purchase protection a credit card can provide. A higher credit score can mean better interest rates on, and terms on loans and credit cards. Many card issuers also reserve their most enticing reward cards for customers with great credit. Lenders aren't the only ones who concern themselves with your credit reports and credit scores. Landlords may check it when they're deciding if they'll rent an apartment to you or how large your security deposit might be. Insurance companies may use your credit score as factors in determining how much they charge you for insuring your car or home. Utility companies may check your credit before deciding to let you open an account or borrow an equipment, right? If, if you have a history of not paying your water bill, then the next time you try to get water, they might charge you more or not let you open an account until you pay back things that you owed in the past. Prospective employers may use information in credit reports in making a hiring decision. Your credit report can even be used to verify your identity uh, and for other purposes defined by federal law. Credit is a tool that can help you buy things you need now and pay for them over time. Establishing and building it up is very, very important. So how do we build it up? Well, a credit card uh, is an easy way to do it if you are very responsible and smart about it. You can set it up so that you can't mess up a little bit, right? Credit cards are very useful uh, when you, uh, uh, as, as a type of credit tool and when used wisely can help you build your credit. However, it's important to manage it because credit cards can also destroy your credit. So when you open up your first credit card account, um, if you've already established some credit history, most of you haven't, you can look for a card with a low spending limit. No matter what, you need to get a card with a low spending limit, right? You might have to have somebody um, help you get a credit card, like a parent or whatever at this point, but you need to make sure that the, uh, 
credit limit is very low. The spending limit is low. $500 is the maximum that you should allow your credit card to be between now and at least until you're 21. Okay? Um, that might sound like overkill, but keep it low, right? You get a job that you make sure you can make more than $500 a month and you pay off that credit card every single month. That will build a profile for you on your credit report and it'll make you look responsible and it will increase your credit score. Your credit card company will try to increase your credit limit. You can always deny that, but you make sure that it stays low and that you can pay it off. Then it's then credit cards are very good and easy to help you build credit. If you say screw it and you spend a ton of money on your credit card, it's hard to pay it off if you get behind. All right, get a secured credit card. If you have a little credit history or negative history, it may be difficult to get a regular credit card. A secured credit card might be an option. They're usually tied to savings account, and the limit on the card is typically the amount in the account or a percentage of it. Just with a regular credit card, you build credit with a secured card by making responsible charges, keeping your balance low or at zero, and paying on time every month. Not all lenders report secured credit cards to credit reporting companies, but the lender may be willing to convert the account to a traditional one after a certain period of time. So it's almost like training wheels on a regular credit card. I never went that route, but that's one you could go. Open a joint account, become an authorized user. If you're having uh, trouble getting your own credit card, open another option for building credit is become an authorized user on someone else's account or to open a joint account with someone who has a good credit history. Parents may choose to help a younger person with a little credit history by adding him or, or her to the parent's existing credit card accounts as an authorized user or opening a new a card jointly. I'll request a credit limit increase. I would say don't do this until you get a much better job, right? Keep your credit limit low, 500 bucks, maybe up to 1,000 at some point. Once you start to have a real career and something like that, your credit limit will go up uh, and you can spend more on it. But again, you have to be smart. Make sure you're not spending too much money, right? If I know that I make $2,000 a month, I can't spend $2,000 a month on my credit card. Right? Um, there's other payments and stuff like that. Like you, you, I mean, your mortgage can't go on your credit card. So you still have to pay your mortgage, right? Your loans aren't supposed to typically, uh, there's ways maybe to try to get around it, but they're legally dubious. Um, but your loans can't be paid by credit cards. Those got to come out of your checking account. So say I make $2,000 a month, I've got a $500 mortgage and a $200 car payment, I can't spend $2,000 on my credit card. I can only spend $1,300 at max on my credit card. And that would leave me with nothing, no, no money for fun stuff, right? So, even if you get a better job and you can raise your credit limit, you still got to be extra careful about how much you spend. Okay, how to do it without a credit card. There's other ways for building credit without using a credit card. Number one, if you took out student loans, pay your student loans diligently. I will tell you this, don't take out a student loan for college. Take less courses and get a job. Okay? Um, it might take you a little longer to get out of college, but student loans are tough to get paid off. They last forever. Interest rates vary depending on what organization you go through. And depending on what job you get, it might not be worth it to take on student loans. It wouldn't have been worth it for me to take on student loans to become a teacher. Teachers don't make a lot of money. I have a friend, I guess a friend of a friend. She got an architecture degree. Architects don't make very much money. And she's got $120,000 in student loans. She makes $40,000 a year. Uh, so there's no way for her to pay that off quickly. Another way to do it, an auto uh, loan. I talked about this earlier. Take out an auto loan, be a co-signer with a parent or with an adult that you know that has good credit, and that way you make payments and it boosts your credit too. Obtaining a secured loan. Banks and credit unions understand it's not always easy to build credit when you're starting out with little credit history or negative marks on your credit report. Some offer credit builder loans, or sometimes they're called passbook or CD loans. Low-risk loans designed specifically to help you build credit. They work much the same way as a secured credit card, uh, for a credit builder loan, you deposit a certain amount into an interest-bearing bank account, and then you borrow against that amount. You pay it off, and credit goes up. Nonprofit lending circles. I've never actually used one of these things, uh, but they've gained some popularity. They've expanded. Organizations such as these can provide affordable loans and report positive payment history to credit bureaus. And then another thing, ask for credit when credit is due when you're working on building it up. Just because you've never had a loan or credit card doesn't mean you don't know about paying bills. If you reliably pay your rent and utilities on time, you've demonstrated good money management habits, and you can ask for credit uh, for that good track records. Okay? Rental payments and utility bills don't always appear on credit reports, so um, that's one of those things that you can call and make sure that you get a bump from it. If you have no credit history at all, 
You're going to have to ask someone to open a joint credit card with you or to co-sign on a loan uh, to help you build credit. You can also ask a landlord or utility companies to report your positive payment history to credit bureaus. And you can ask a potential creditor to request your extended view score from Experian or Advantage score uh, from all three major credit bureaus. You can, these scores incorporate more sources of information to build a better picture of your financial history. All right, some things to avoid. Okay, some behaviors can undermine your efforts to build credit, so it's important to know how to avoid and what to avoid. So four common mistakes, not understanding how much you can afford. Okay? In general, a 43% debt-to-income ratio should be taken into consideration when taking on additional debt. Let's make that simpler, right? Um, you need to budget, right? The second one says not having a budget. So you find out how much you make every month, and then you budget it out. And you don't. You have to be personally responsible here. You don't spend more than you can spend, right? It sounds simple, and it sounds easy, but unfortunately, it's not as easy as it should be for a lot of us, right? So you need to budget out how much money you have, how much money you want to save, how much money you want to save for specific things like traveling or a house or whatever, how much money you got left over after that, and then budget out how much you can spend on things. All right, failing to shop around for installment loans, okay? Don't just go to the first place that might approve you, right? You might be able to get a better deal at better places, right? So if you're getting an auto loan, you can, you can get pre-approved by numerous places, right? Or you can say, hey, um, Delta Federal Credit Union offered me 5%. Then go to Bank of Colorado and say, they offered me 5 what can you offer me, right? Um, comparison shopping can help you find the lowest available interest rates, fees, and service chargers. Uh, lenders recognize this shopping behavior, and credit scoring system, systems take this into consideration as well for inquiries made in a short period of time. Failing to protect yourself from fraud. Credit card companies already take measures to reduce fraud, uh, but you as well need to be personally responsible, right? So shred statements and receipts. Make sure that stuff doesn't get into bad people's hands. But check your credit card every month. Look at your statements. Make sure there's no fraudulent purchases. You also can pay for outside credit monitoring. I use LifeLock, I've always had that, and they can make sure that there's no fraudulent charges on your credit, okay? Last thing before we go to part two of this lecture, uh, don't apply for multiple credit cards in a short period of time. Don't try to get seven credit cards uh, in a year, okay? You honestly don't need more than one or two uh, in your day-to-day -day actual life, okay? Credit can be a powerful tool to help you achieve financial goals, but it's important to understand how it works and to not do dumb things. Right? Like some of these things I just mentioned. All right. Don't have too much left, but I'm going to run out of time on this video. So I'm going to stop it and we're going to do a very short part two.